Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning for Getting Radical with the Word devotional series. I am Betty Peacock, and this is my husband, Louis Peacock. And it is so great to have each and every one of you on this morning. Um, thank you for participating with us in this wonderful, wonderful series. And uh, we just thank the Lord for you. Um, uh, sometimes I may not have been on with you live, but I have definitely been, been going back and, and uh, watching these on YouTube. And I tell you, everybody is doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. God is using each and every one of you to speak to us through his word. So we're just grateful and thankful for, uh, for everything that God is showing us in his word. So, um, and as you know, we are, we'll be using the acronym SPACE, which stands for, um, S stands for, is there a sin to confess? P, is there a promise to claim? A, is there an attitude to adjust or change? C, is there a command to obey? And E, is there an example to follow? And I tell you, that is an awesome, awesome acronym. Um, as Lewis and I were, um, were preparing for this session, Lewis made the comment that this acronym causes you to read the Bible with purpose. And so I love that. And it really does allow you to delve into the scriptures in a way that is refreshing and that is such a blessing um, to each and every one of us. I'm going to be reading uh, Acts the 17th chapter and I'm going to be using the New Living Translation. Um, and so we, um, as we, as we uh, read, that's the, uh, the translation I'm gonna be reading. And also don't forget to place your comments into the chat box so that you can um, so that we can share your chats at the end of the reading. Um, and again, we're gonna, I'm going to be reading from Acts chapter 17 and um, from the New Living Translation. And before we begin, we're going to ask Lewis to lead us in prayer. Our Father and our God, we do thank you, Lord, that we can come together this morning, Lord, and uh, looking at your word. From, uh, from this chapter 17 of Acts. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would uh, open our hearts as only you can do, Lord, mm. where your word can come in and, and uh, take root in our hearts and bring forth fruit in our lives. Yes. And Lord, we pray that you would give Betty clarity of mind to read and, uh, and the participants, Lord, uh, clarity of mind to, uh, to, to just glean from your word, Lord, mm -hmm. and participate. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So here we go. Again, Acts chapter 17, uh, New Living Translation. Paul preaches in Thessalonica, verse 1. Paul and Silas then traveled through the towns of Amphipolis and Apollonia and came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was Paul's custom, he went to the synagogue service, and for three Sabbaths in a row, he used the scriptures to reason with the people. He explained the prophecies and proved that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead. He said, this Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Some of the Jews who listened were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, along with many God-fearing Greek men and quite a few prominent women. Verse 5, but some of the Jews were jealous, so they gathered some troublemakers from the marketplace to form a mob and start a riot. They attacked the home of Jason, searching for Paul and Silas, so they could drag them out to the crowd. Not finding them there, they dragged out Jason and some of the other believers instead and took them before the city council. Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted, and now they are here disturbing our city too. And Jason has welcomed them into his home. They are all guilty of treason against Caesar, for they profess allegiance to another king named Jesus. Verse 8, the, the people of the city as well as the city council were thrown into turmoil by these reports. So the officials forced Jason and the other believers to post bond, and then they released them. Paul and Silas in Berea. Verse 10, that very night the, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. When they arrived there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. And the people of Berea were more open-minded than, than those in Thessalonica, and they listened eagerly to Paul's message. 
They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. As a result, many Jews believed, as did many of the prominent Greek women and men. Verse 13, but when some Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God in Berea, they went there and stirred up trouble. The believers acted at once, sending Paul on to the coast while Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those escorting Paul went with him all the way to Athens. Then they returned to Berea with instructions for Silas and Timothy to hurry and join him. Paul preaches in Athens. Verse 16. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply troubled by all the idols he saw everywhere in the city. He went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles, and he spoke daily in the public square to all who happened to be there. Verse 18, he also had a debate with some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. When he told them about Jesus and his resurrection, they said, what's this babbler trying to say with these strange ideas he's picked up? Others said he seems to be preaching about some foreign gods. Verse 19, then they took him to the high council of the city. Come and tell us about this new teaching, they said. You are saying some rather strange things and we want to know what it's all about. It should be explained that all the Athenians as well as the foreigners in Athens seem to spend all their time discussing the latest ideas. Verse 22, so Paul standing before the council addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I noticed that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines and one of your altars had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. Praise God. Verse 24, he is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples and human hands can't serve his needs for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything and he satisfies every need. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall and he determined their boundaries. Verse 27, his purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. Verse 30, God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. Verse 32, when they heard Paul speak with them about the resurrection from the dead, some laughed in contempt, but others said, we want to hear more about this later. Verse 33, they ended Paul's discussion. That ended Paul's discussion with them, but some joined him and became believers. Among them, were Dionysius, Dionysius, a member of the council, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. So we just thank God, and as we look at um, our chats, uh, we uh, start out with Miss Darlene Jenkins. Uh, she says, verse two, an example to follow, Paul. Paul went to church, which was his custom. Amen. Amen. And uh, Pastor Marshall says, verse 11, an, uh, an attitude to adopt. The Bereans received the message with great eagerness. We need to always receive God's word with eagerness in our lives. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Marshall and Miss, Miss Darlene. Uh, Miss Barbara Robinson says an example, examples to follow. She said is in verse four, some listened, were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas. Faith comes by hearing, amen. Thank you so much, Miss Barbara. And uh, then Miss Darlene says verse 11, example to follow. 
they search the scriptures for themselves to know the truth. And mm -hmm. I have that in my notes as a major, major example to follow. Mm -hmm. Amen. We all need to search the scriptures for ourselves to know the truth. Praise God. And Miss Emma Brown says, a promise to claim is in verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Miss Amma. And then Pastor Marshall says in verse 23, an example to follow, Paul looked for something in their culture to make a bridge to present them with the gospel. Um, and let's go back to that 23rd verse. I thought that was such an insight um, that Pastor Marshall says. So Pastor Marshall says, Paul looked for something in their culture to make a bridge to present them with the gospel. And that verse reads, um, for as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines and one of your altars had this inscription on it to an unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. That is such, such a great, great uh, example to follow. Um, thank you, Pastor Marshall. And also Pastor Fordham says, verse 25, an attitude to adopt all life comes from and is dependent upon God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. And Pastor Fordham again says, verse 30, a command to obey, repent of our sins and return to God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then we have Pastor O'Geese on the line. Pastor O'Geese says, verse 28, we are all God's children. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be your children. That's my prayer every day, God. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be your children and you being our father. And also, Pastor O'Geese says, verse 27, our purpose in life is to seek the Lord. That's our example Amen. to follow. Praise God. It, it is a great example to follow. Yeah. So we just thank God. Man, the chats have been off the chain. I'm just so grateful for everybody supporting and being a part of this. So, um, Louis, do you have anything else to add? Well, no, uh, I don't have anything else to add. I do have an observation. I think the SPACE acronym has been covered well by the chats. But I just noticed that... Uh, Paul addressed three different types of people or three groups of people, you know, first the Thessalonians, then the Brians, and, uh, and then those at Athens. And, and in all three places, you notice that some believed and some didn't believe. Hmm. And as I viewed this and looked into it, it, it looks like that those that didn't believe were all bound by their traditions. Hmm. And wow. so I think we have to be careful that we don't let our traditions, uh, bind us to where we don't respond to the scriptures. Mm, praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe I appreciate that. That That's a great, great observation. Um, and everything, like Lewis said, just everything that I had in my notes um, basically um, were covered. Um, there was one, uh, a couple of things. Um, the uh, verse... Um, 29, I think is, and uh, to me, maybe an attitude to change. And, and since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. So we um, uh, realize that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He does not, uh, he's not an idol of gold or silver or stone. And so we thank the Lord for that. But also, I think that woven throughout um, this chapter is a, is a sin to confess, and that sin is the sin of unbelief. Um, yeah. You see in verses 4 through 5 and verse 13, it talks about some listened and some were persuaded and some were, but then it goes on to say some were jealous and tried to stir up the people. So it, it, it speaks to the fact that not all believed. And so um, we as we come together, we um, confess, um, uh, a sin to confess is unbelief. So we, um, as we hear the word of God and we read his word, uh, we should believe in what 
he has said. So we're just, again, we're just so grateful um, to the Lord. And as we go back um, to our chats, I think we had um, one more, um, um, yes, one more chat. And that was by Pastor Ogeest. And he said, someone has said that it takes 21 days to form a good habit. Let this Bible reading become a new habit. Praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor, Pastor Ogeest. Um, this, I, I, I totally agree. Um, so we just thank God for this time and we thank God for each and every one of you that have been on the call today and all of the participation with the chats and we're just so grateful. So um, as we end today, we're gonna end in prayer. I'll let Lewis end with prayer and, uh, and we just thank God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your word. We thank you, Lord, uh, for Betty sharing it with us today and all of the uh, chats, Lord, as uh, you have uh, given insight uh, mm. to those listening and participating, Lord. Yes. Lord. And so, Lord, we just pray now that you would seal your word in our heart, Lord, mm -hmm. that it could not be taken from us. Yes. Lord. And it would bring forth fruit in our lives. Mm -hmm. We just thank you and and, uh, and just offer this prayer in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Again, thank each and every one of you for for being with us this morning. And uh, let's just continue to pray as we all, um, uh, and, and stay safe. Let's continue to pray for our families and uh, every one of us that's going through this um, trying time. So God bless you, we love you, and um, talk to you soon. Take care, bye-bye.